Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. We have got a busy day ahead of us. We've actually got a busy week ahead of us. We've got a lot of things that we want to get done and we are getting ever closer to actually finishing everything on this map. So what are the plans today? Well, we've got to finish the baling first. So I'm just going to move this one out of the way. I think we will park all the machinery in the yard, just to start off with. So I will bring you over here, and I will drop you right there. Switch that tractor off, and then I'm going to jump over to the... Oops. Step too far. I'm going to jump over to this one, and we will finish doing the baling. So this is going to be our first task. We get this baling out of the way. Once the baling is done, we will jump on to... Uh, well, I'll unhitch this machinery, and I will... Uh, put a trailer onto this tractor. We will run around and we will gather up all of the bales. First, we will gather the bales from this field. And then once we've done that and we've put them back in the yard, we will then start working on gathering the bales up in that field. Before we start getting the bales from up in that field, though, I'm going to get the other tractor with the fertilizer spreader on it and start spreading fertilizer on this field. Once we've got those done, the tractor with the fertilizer spreader is going to move up into the big field up there and it's going to start doing the fertilizer up there we'll do a round around the outside with it and then it will carry on and just uh, do the rest of it itself we in the meantime will be uh getting the cult yeah that's got to be the next thing that we do we'll there'll be fertilizer on this field we'll get the cultivator on and we will start cultivating this field. What we've also got to do is we've got to buy a planter from the shop. And we've got to bring that one back. And then we'll be able to start planting corn in this field. Because that's going to be the next crop. Which we will want to be keeping ready for our pigs. The silage bales and the straw bales. We're keeping all of those as well. So we're not actually going to be selling anything. The only thing that we're going to be selling is the oats. And of course all of the timber that we've got lined up over that side. Should be simple enough. I'm hoping we should be able to get all of that sold without too many problems. And then we can carry on and sell the tree harvester. Once we've gotten rid of all of the timber over there, we can, we've can. we got the tree harvester to sell, we've got the uh, timber trailer to sell, we've got the stump grinder to sell, and from your comments last week about the milk tanker, almost all of you said that the dairy would be collecting the milk. It would be really, really unusual to have the dairy insisting that we have to deliver our own milk to the dairy. So we should be running it the same as we do with the grain. We have a trailer there to represent the merchant's trailer uh, coming to collect the grain and then taking it away to give us the money. So uh, we will do exactly the same with a milk tanker. We'll have a milk tanker that will be parked in the yard. It won't be ours. We won't be allowed to use it or do anything with it. We won't be able to use the truck or do anything with the truck other than moving milk from our cattle pen to the sell point, which is just representing the merchant turning up and buying the milk. That's the plan. That's what we're going to hopefully be doing with our milk and uh, how we're going to be selling it. So I will add in the money into the map and I will buy the tanker in due course when we actually need it. I won't do it just yet, but I will get that done, um, ready for when we've got cows here on the map. So that's that bit taken care of. Most That's what most people said that they thought that we should be doing. And that way we've got all of that. That's covered. We, we've got milk sales being covered and we're not going to need to worry about them. As some people have said that I should be selling milk every day regardless of the price. And other people have said that it's quite common now to have milk being picked up every other day. Uh, any comments that I've had regarding when we sell milk... Nobody has suggested that we should be waiting for when the price is right for the milk. It should either be done every single day or every other day. Uh, no, no, no other options. We take whatever price is offered on the day and that's it. We've got no choice. So we will start off with every other day because we've that's, that's what we've got. Uh, so from the first moment that we get milk, we will deliver... Uh, on the second day. So if we get cows, we'll start getting milk that same day because this is the base game. Um, 
So we'll start getting milk the same day. So we won't sell the milk the the following morning. We will wait another day and then we will sell the milk. That's that's how we will start off with it. And then after that, it will be every morning, as soon as we wake up, the first thing we will do, or every other morning, as soon as we wake up, the first thing we do is load the milk in a tanker and take it over to the sell point. Regardless of what, we won't be looking at the price. We won't need to go into the menu and look at the price. That's not going to affect in any way what happens with us selling the milk. I mean, yeah, we can have a look and we can see all the, this is what we're getting today. This is what's being offered today. But we will have to still sell the milk regardless of what the price actually is because we've got a second day collection. So that's, that's how we can work that one. And I think that's going to work out fairly well, actually. I think that's going to be um, quite a, a realistic sort of approach. I mean, yes, admittedly, the farm gate price doesn't fluctuate as much as it does in this game. But I still think it's going to work out quite good. I, th I definitely think it's going to work out quite nicely. Um, we'll see. Now then. Um, next up, great demand at Universal Selling. But, oh, I forgot to increase the time scale. We're, sp we're supposed to be on normal time scale now, aren't we? Let me just uh, bring that bit up there. So, yes, with the fact that we're going to be having a milk tanker here that isn't actually going to be ours, what that means is that we're going to have the... Um, the, the truck will also be sold. We won't have any need for the truck that we've got here. So that one will be sold along with the milk, uh, along with the milk tanker, along with the, um, the tree harvester, the timber trailer and everything else. Like all of it is going to be sold. And that should, I mean, that's, that's a huge amount of money. There is a lot of money tied up into that machinery. We've not only have we got the tree harvester but getting the truck sold and also the um the other little machinery as well like the trailer and everything that's i'm hoping that would be enough just on its own to cover the cost of the um the cattle pen and the pig pen and then with all of the timber that's coming in that's going to be pushing on very close to actually being able to afford the a whole load of uh, cattle and pigs as well. Like, there, there is a lot of money coming in. And coming in quite soon as well. I, I, I'm, I'm really quite pleased about that. Now, I'm going to step that one down there. And then I'm going to bring this one over here. And we're going to stop that one right there. Uh, just drop that one right there, I mean. I want to get the front weight. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the four-wheel trailer over there. Now, down on the flat to get the straw, that's not a problem. That's not going to make any difference. However, we're also going to be going on steep ground, aren't we? That's really steep ground up there. And ideally, what I would like is not one of those trailers. If I was collecting any bales and I had to work on a hill like that... I would not choose to use a trailer like that. I would choose to use a trailer that was a uh, single or double axle on the back without a turntable on it. So the weight of the trailer was on the tractor, pushing down, giving me extra grip. That's not an option, unfortunately. We don't have one of those trailers. So we're going to just do a quick repair work on here. And we're going to customize this tractor over here. And we're going to do wide tires with weights. We want everything we can possibly get holding that tractor down on the ground. Because that is a lot of weight that we're going to be putting in behind it. So, yes, I want wide tires with weights on there. Thank you. That's going to be good. And we're also going to go and get the uh, little thingy over here. Let me just bring that one around. Oop, steady, steady like that. And there. So we got the front weight to assist with the four-wheel drive, plus we've got the rear weights on wheels, which will assist with just helping to keep that tractor down and getting us a bit of grip, which, quite frankly, I think is rather important at this stage. I think it would be rather concerning if I didn't have that. So I will grab you, and then we're going to start loading up some of these bales. So let's uh, set that into loading position. Am I close enough to get the bales? Sort of. I'll do it. Do a little bit of... Uh, get get me wiggle on right here. There we go. Get me wiggle on. And no, I'm not doing this particularly realistic with gathering these bales. I want to hurry up and get this done so that I can get the fertilizer started on this field as well. 
So forgive me if I rush around like a bit of a lunatic and just grab these up nice and fast. Then that's done. It's out of the way. We don't need to worry about it then. And we can concentrate on starting the fertilizer job and getting the other bales gathered up and brought down from the top field. I know I did say oh, right from the beginning of doing that field, yes, we're going to be selling the bales. Yes, we're going to be selling the bales. Um, constantly, all the time, talking about how we'll sell those bales, we'll make a load of money. However, now that I'm looking at them, I really think that not selling them would be the better option. All right, well, then we've got a huge amount of silage already piled up, ready for the cows. Next cut will be hay, so we'll have a huge amount of hay piled up, ready for the cows. And then after that, if we need to, if we find that actually, yes, we could do with uh, selling bales in order to get some money, well, then we can do a round of silage bales on our next cut, and we can do all of those w without any issues. Um, but by keeping the silage bales, it means that we're not going to have to go and buy the silage fermenter. And that one's over $100,000, so I'd rather not buy it if I can get away with it. I, not, not having to buy that one does mean that we've then saved ourselves over $100,000, which at this point is really good. Like $100,000, that's several cows. Uh, that's actually $100,000 is 40 cows, okay? But we want to be looking at things in terms of cattle numbers. So 40 cows, or actually I think it's 110,000, so that's 44 cows. Uh, and So we've, we've got a, a straight choice. We can choose 44 cows, or we can choose to have um, the silage fermenter here. And considering that we've already got the bales now, I'm thinking the silage fermenter can wait we, we may not even have to use it because and let's keep let's keep in mind that if we get the silage fermenter i'm not even sure we can do grass bales to go into that one i think we have to load it with loose and if we've got to load it with loose we well, you know what that means that means that we've got to fork out for a, a forage wagon to be able to gather up the loose grass to bring in and put into the silage fermenter that would be the more realistic option as well it would be unusual i would say to have a silage fermenter in a yard and fill it with bales I, I do think that would be an... Oops, okay, I don't, I don't want to turn that one on. I want to take the cover off. <laughs> my bad, my bad. I was, I was just testing. I was just testing the spinners to make sure that they worked. Honest, that, that, that's, that's what I was doing. Right. Let's go over into the field and get started on here, if we can. And away we go. Right. We will work our way around the field... Do one round, I'll then top up with fertilizer, and then we can let the hired help carry on with this. Once I've set the hired help going in here, we will then be going and getting our bales up there. So yeah, we the realistic option for loading a silage fermenter would, I feel, be getting... And we do need to play this series as realistic as we can, other than the whole auto loads. But I've gone over that two dozen times at this point, um, and probably more besides. Um, so yeah, we're... Trying to stick to realism, so in order to be realistic with the silage fermenter, if we were to have one of them in our yard on our farm, we'd be loading that with forage wagons, and so we'd need to go and buy a forage wagon. And we'd be looking at, even if we got a small, cheap forage wagon, a modded one, we'd still be looking at a minimum of $25,000, which is another 10 cows. So we're looking at 54 cows or the silage fermenter and the forage wagon. That's that's a lot, right? That That is a lot. So I'm thinking sticking with bales is the best option right now. And the fact that our bales are 8,000 litres a pop does make life a little bit easier for us. I mean, yes, that bit is possibly, potentially not quite as realistic as some. But, I mean, we've got higher density bales and they're larger bales so, so yeah i don't think it's completely out of the question um the the larger more dense bales we, we we can work with that that that's the sort of thing that we can go with and and that we can say yes that is actually an acceptable little bit of a tweak to how we're doing things and i i, I for one I'm, I'm quite happy to do that so if we can keep going with that excellent eight thousand liters per bale and we can then do bale handling. I mean, it's not going to require all that much. And we are going to be having a stationary feed mixer in the yard, which is 
going to be considerably faster than having the trailed feed mixer because mainly because the trailed feed mixers are very 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 time consuming to use especially if we're going for a full cattle pen right we'll be there mixing up loads of stuff forever literally forever and i don't want to be doing that it's going to be too dull to watch so we will be building a stationary feed mixer in a yard and we'll just be throwing bales into it that bit i think would actually be realistic because i have seen stationary feed mixers before and they are generally loaded up with bales or with loose from a clamp and we don't have a clamp we've got bales you take the bales over you open them up and then you chuck them into the feed mixer and then it's all mixed up in the feed mixer um the reason that you wouldn't do that loading into a silage fermenter is that the silage fermenter when it takes the bales the material coming in is because it doesn't uh churn it up like a feed mixer does a feed mixer will chew the stuff up properly chew it up and mix it whereas the silage fermenter doesn't do it quite like that I, well i don't think it does but i could be wrong because i've never actually seen a real life silage fermenter working in a yard um so i'm not quite sure how they work i do know that they exist i do know that there is actually such a thing i'm just not quite sure of the ins and outs of um how they work so yeah um don't quote me too much on on the, the, the silage fermenter type things now we need to get up this hill and we need to go and get these bales. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up the side of the hill over here. So we're going up this hill. We are going up the steep bit. Um, but we're doing so empty. We're going to gather up these bales first. And then we're going to head over and we're going to get the other bales over on the other side. Now, if you were doing this in real life and you were actually using a loader, what you would do is you would gather the bales on the hills using the loader. And you would move them to the most level point in the field. In this case, we would be using the loader and going and gathering one bale at a time, possibly two, depending on the steepness of the bit of ground that you're working on. Uh, me, personally, what I would do is I would get one bale from down on the steep bit. I would come straight up the hill to the less steep bit and get a second bale, and then I would take the two bales and I would move to the level bit at the top of the hill, and that is where I would build my stack of bales ready to load onto a trailer that would come along to be loaded a little bit later on. I would not be... Let's just bring that one down over here. I would not be trying to load the trailer on the side of the hill. Definitely not. There's no way I would attempt to be doing that. And I wouldn't be doing very much driving around sideways on the hills either. Helper Jays, how, how have you completed your task? How? You're, you're just going to sit here staring at a wall, are you? you you're just going to sit there staring at a wall? Yeah? You know it's hard times at the moment, right, mate? Yeah, you know that there are actually a lot of people who are looking for a job right now. And you're sat there staring at a wall because what? It's too difficult to go and find just a little bit further along. That that was too difficult for you to do on your own. You know what? You know what? I've, I've, I've had it with you. I've, I'm going to get someone that's competent. You, you, you're you gone. You're gone, right? You, you leave. I've already got your replacement. She's here. She's working well. You're, you're out. You're out on your ear. Pack your things. Be gone from this place by nightfall. You've got two hours, right? I, I, I've absolutely had it with your attitude. You're always constantly trying to avoid work. I have had it. You obviously don't want this job. You obviously don't want to be here. You don't want to work here. That is fine. I can accept that. Go. Just leave. You, you, that's it. Right. Okay. I'm really sorry you had to see that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, occasionally, you, you do have to take the, the, the workforce in hand. What they don't seem to understand is that money doesn't grow in on trees. Like, I... I they seem to think that money just grows on trees obviously the money doesn't grow on trees right for us the money mostly grows in small plants that uh in the ground like like the grass right here and, and then the oats and, and and so on but that's not trees is it so money doesn't grow on trees except that technically we're also going to be cutting down a load of trees and selling them for money um minor detail it doesn't matter it doesn't matter their, their attitude stank and now they've they, they've paid the price for it so that that is that is the only thing that matters <laughs> it's the only thing that is important now uh i'm going to come down here we're trying to keep this one level 
Gonna try and keep this one level. Right, there we see this this is where I really don't like this trailer. Right? Okay, I need to I need to unload onto the trailer and we'll put the straps on. This is where I really don't like this trailer, right? So, look, we have got trailer brakes, and you can see we've got trailer brakes right there. There's the um, air canister. There's, so, we've got air brakes on this trailer, actually, uh, which is good. We have got, we've got air brake, air-assisted brakes on this trailer, or at least that's what it looks like. I mean, that might be an oil, that might be an oil reservoir for standard brakes, but so long as you've got brakes on the trailer, that is at least. I mean, you can't see the pipe going over, but I would assume... There is no way that I would attempt to come down a hill like this with this kind of weight. Like, these are silage bales here. These are heavy. There is absolutely no way that I would be attempting to do this if I didn't have some form of trailer braking, right? Trailer braking would be essential. I'd be really reluctant to do this anyway. Right? I, I genuinely would be reluctant to try and do this using this trailer. Like, I do not like turntable trailers for moving heavy loads like this. It's inherently unsafe. They are far less safe than a single, um, sing well, it can, it can be a double axle trailer, but if they're, if they're on a, um, if they're hitched on, if, if the, the hitch is on the trailer and the weight of that trailer is pushing down on the axle of the tractor, I mean, yeah. The axle is not on the trailer is normally moved forward a bit, so you don't have all of the weight, but you've got a lot of weight pushing down on that tractor. It makes it safer. It makes it a lot, lot safer for the operator. Um, every, everybody involved is a lot safer. These trailers, yes, they're good, and yes, they can move a lot of weight, but for actually working steep ground or anything like that, I don't like them at all. I, I, I'm very uncomfortable at the thought of having to use them to work any kind of steep ground. For long distance transport, that's different. Long distance transport, these are actually preferable over the other ones that I've mentioned with the, without the turntable on them. Reason being, let me just put them back onto there. Uh, reason being is that these trailers here, instead of having all of that weight on the tractor, they've got the weight on their own axle. So the only thing the tractor is having to do is pull rather than having to also sustain the weight of them. And when you're just doing long distance uh, road travel or anything along those lines, anything similar to that, that's better for the tractor, right? You haven't got all that extra weight bearing down on the tractor and on the tires as there's a load of extra wear and tear on the tractor that is then avoided, right? That That's actually a really, really good thing. So in you got two different circumstances. If you're doing a lot of road work, then yes, you would want one of these trailers. If you're doing work off the field like I'm doing at the moment, then you would generally want to avoid this type of trailer and your preference would be for the other type of trailer. Safer all round. And I personally, I find them more stable as well. I've um, always found these type. I mean, I admittedly, I haven't used these trailers very much. Nowhere near as much as I've used the other ones. Um, but that's largely because I haven't done very much road work with tractors. It's always been loaded onto lorries and then shifted. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's all about the balance and the weight on the axles and things like that. There's a lot to sort of take into consideration when you're picking out which would be the best one for the job. And like this one right here, if I was trying to go up a hill and this one was three quarters loaded or even loaded, uh, what weight have I got on the tractor? There isn't any, right? There is a real weight, uh, a weight of lack. There is a lack of weight on the tractor itself. So your tractor is going to find it a lot more difficult to actually find any purchase on the ground. You're not going to be able to grip. If you can't grip, the tractor is far more likely to spin. Now, if you've got the other type of trailer without the turntable on it, there's a lot more weight going onto that back axle on the tractor. We've also got a front weight to keep the front nose of the tractor down as well. And that also adds to the weight that is pushing down on the tractor, which is really, really helping it to gain all the purchase that it needs on the ground and propel the machine forward. It's amazing how much difference it can make to the overall performance of everything. It, it literally is. It is absolutely amazing how much difference that can make. Just the that weight. 
uh, for anybody that I mean I mean I know a lot of you who are watching this are probably already familiar with these concepts because a lot of you will have actually done it yourselves so I'm curious anybody who's watching who used to work on a farm or who still does work on a farm who's got any kind of experience in agriculture or haulage for that matter because this also applies to lorry drivers truck drivers um, what sort of trailers do you prefer under what circumstances? Would you agree with what I've been waffling on about today? I know that not everybody agrees with what I waffle on about every time, and that's to be expected. Um, so one of my favorite sayings, and I will say this as cleanly as possible, everybody has an op opinions are like backsides. Everybody has one, and they all stink. So, <laughs> Um, so yes, uh, uh, my own. The, the, I'm only expressing my own opinions, but I'm curious. Does what I say ring true for anybody that is in haulage or agriculture or anything that is involved with moving heavy loads from point A to point B uh, via whatever means necessary? Would you do you agree with my assessment of the types of trailers that are involved with it? Um, and the weight and the grip and and so on like this this trailer here honestly that this one i would really really hate to use this in real life for this job i would genuinely hate it there is a lot of weight on these bales right here the, the silage bales is they're very very heavy so we've got a huge amount of weight on this trailer it just seems like it's a little bit too much weight for this type of trailer at least for going on any kind of surface that resembles something that's not dead level, anyway. Um, I mean, yes, going along a road is a little bit different because you're far more reliant on the brakes than you are on any other kind of aspect of it. Whereas when you're using... Even if you're using a trailer like this with decent brakes and so on, but you're working on some uneven ground, like we've got here, and you're working on hills then just to trailer brakes alone you're you're also relying a lot more on the grip of the wheels to be able to pull this trailer along and move it as well as uh slow it down coming down a hill so the, the whole sliding down the hill thing becomes a lot more of a concern it, it becomes a lot more of a an issue that you actually do need to seriously consider dealing with while you're doing all of your different bits and pieces so i'm gonna run up there and yes, I know right now I'm running around on the hill, but uh, as I've said, we wouldn't be doing this in real life. If I was doing clearing this field in real life, all of these bales would be up on the level. They would be up on the top, up on that level bit up there, and that's where we'd be loading them. I would also probably use this bit right here, because this is a nice level spot right here. So any nearby bales here, I would grab them and put them on here, because I've got a nice exit route as well. And that's another thing that I'd take into account. I would prefer to put the bales here... Because I can drive the tractor straight over there onto the road and then down. I've got less steep ground that I've then got to traverse with the tractor and trailer after I've loaded up the tractor and trailer from my stack in the field. Because if I come up here onto this bit, I've then got to get down off of this bit before I can get to the yard. So as low down as possible is ideal. That, that's what you'd want. Um... Always when stacking straw in... I, I've done a lot of straw work. I used to spend a lot of time... I used to spend my summers when I was younger working in the straw fields in uh, the in southern England. In um, When I was... Well, from mid-teens up to early 20s. Uh, I did a lot of straw work and load of work and, and stuff like that. When I was clearing the really, really steep fields... I just want to stop that there, unload those, and we'll put them on there. Uh, I, we got two and a half loads out of that field. Oh, wait, no, we haven't finished yet. I've still got the, the bales down in the yard to, to get as well, so there's even more to go and clear. Um, when I was clearing the steep fields, if the road leaving the field was at the top of the field, all the bales in the field I would move up to the top. It'd take quite a while to do it, but it's the safest way to do it. And if the road leaving the field was at the bottom, then all bales in the field would be moved to the bottom of the field. I would go up and get them and move every single one to the bottom of the field. And yeah, it does take a while to do that. It is a rather time-consuming job, but 
It's also the safest way to do it, and it was also what I was told to do. Um, well, actually, it was what I was told to do sometimes. I wasn't always told to do it. I'm assuming that I wasn't always told to do it just because I'd been told once, and they assumed, therefore, that I would get on and do it. Um... There's no way that you would expect a tractor and trailer to try and drag a really heavy load up a really, really steep hill. It, it just doesn't work. Um, yes, it can be done, but my goodness me, doesn't it make a mess of the field? I'm, I'm just trying... Right, I need to turn that one off. And then load those on. I don't actually technically need to do that because I'm about to unload this. So we've got almost three full loads out of that field. That's pretty good. That's pretty impressive. I mean, what were we getting for silage bales for one load? I think it was... If we said $300 per thousand litres... Let's, let's work this out a second. $300 per thousand litres, right? Okay, I want to load those onto there. Then I want to stop, and then I want to do that. $300 per thousand. We'll go for a nice easy number, 300 exactly, uh, per thousand litres. That means that we get $2,400 per... Uh, bale, because it's 8 times the 300. So 2,400 per bale. Hang on. Unload those onto there. Right, we're done with that. That that, that trader is finished with. Um, $2,300... Uh, $2,400 per bale, and there are 24 bales per trailer load, which is... Uh, 2,400... 24,000... And another four at uh, 9,600. What did I say? 48,000. Uh, come on, Frith. 48, uh, 57,600. That took way too long to figure out, didn't it? That, that's embarrassing. Um, 58,600. That's what I said, wasn't it? 50, uh, 57,600. Right, we have finished this field over here. So this one needs to be reloaded. And we want to head up to that one. And then this field right here. Actually, we're going to be waiting until the morning before we start doing the planting. So we'll we'll get the stuff over here. Well, we can start the cultivating. We can start doing a little bit of cultivating. Um, Fifty-seven thousand six hundred dollars per trailer, and we're two full trailers, so that makes one hundred and four, one hundred and fifteen thousand two hundred, and then a few bales short of the next fifty-seven. So if we call it a straight even fifty. Uh, we're looking at about $160,000 off that one field. $160,000 worth of silage off of the field if we get the decent price. That, I would say, by anybody's standards, is pretty reasonable. Now, anyway, I have run out of time for today's episode, so we will get this one lined up and ready, and we will start doing the fertilizer spreading at the beginning of the next episode, and then we can start doing the cultivating as well. Or we might, no, uh... Do it the other way round, actually, so that we can get the cultivating going nice and quick. So, yeah, we'll do that the other way round. We'll, we'll start the cultivating first, and then we'll come back over this one. But we've run out of time for today anyway. So, if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.